Welcome to another Business Spotlight, where we share insights, reflections, and pearls of wisdom from local business owners. My name is Kerry James. I'm a business coach and facilitator. And on this morning's Business Spotlight, I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Guy Bartlett, founder of the Business Buyers Club and Serial Entrepreneur. Good morning to you, Guy, and welcome to Business Spotlight. Morning, Kerry. Great to be here. Good stuff. So let's get stuck straight in. Business Buyers Club, a reasonable clue in the title about what that's all about. But how long have you been in business, please, Guy? And what sort of areas do you specialise in? So um, Business Buyers Club was founded uh, 10 years ago, uh, 2014. Really, uh, after quite a long time in the, the world of acquisitions for myself, uh, essentially it happened by accident. I had quite a few people, friends of mine, coming to me saying, how did you do what you did? I, I bought my first two companies in 2006 um, uh, and I, I got into acquisitions really to solve a, a business problem. I was a, a, a business owner. I'd grown a company from scratch um, from the mid-90s to the early 2000s uh, based in the Northwest. We became a top 10 marketing agency, um, lots of high-profile blue chip clients. A specialist in direct marketing. We ran the JD Sports National Loyalty Program, the JD Gold Card, a whole you know ton of, uh, of really significant programs for lots of well-known household names in the retail sector, really. Um, but we experienced that thing of plateauing, Kerry, which I'm sure you, you'll have come across in your time working with business owners, where we, we grew fairly quickly and significantly, and then we kind of almost tapped out really and it was like oh, okay how, how do we how do we go to the next level and back in the 1980s and 90s I was a massive fan of Sir Martin Sorrell who built WPP one of the most successful global advertising and marketing network but many people don't know that Martin Sorrell was really an FD he, he was never a sort of creative or a suit um, and was the brains behind the growth of Saatchi and Saatchi back in the day so I kind of admired what he'd done from afar, but figured there must be a better way to do this. And I got to a point where I thought if I if I bought our supply chain, because we spent quite a bit of money with printers and mailing houses and other associated businesses, then maybe we could cross fertilize customers and obviously keep more of the profit in the group and grow the business. So that was the the thinking behind it really. Um I then had a series of Misfortunes had a shareholder fallout, which some people have experienced that wasn't a lot of fun. I fractured my spine and I, and I kind of came through that whole period going, okay, what's the universe telling me? Um, and I just felt I'm going to give this business lark, uh, you know, business buying thing a go and see where I get to. And spent 2005 working on a, a venture capital funded project and also looking for companies to buy. And I, I started by choosing um, the facilities management sector because I figured it's nice to have a business that has continuity of, of revenue and, and uh, you know you don't fire your contract cleaner so they turn up every day and things like that so I was looking for lots of different types of businesses in, in, in a range of those business support services really and, and ended up buying two electrical contractors um, excuse me in 2006 um, went from nothing to 2.7 million revenue pulled out a significant amount of cash and thought this beats working for a living. I've kind of cracked the code. Um, of course I hadn't. Um, I went on and bought three more companies, made lots of mistakes, um, ended up selling some, closing some, and, and emerged out of that in 2012 with a another growth business um, in FM, working for the likes of Carillion and other big companies. Um, found myself, I kind of morphed into construction. My background's in, uh, I was commissioned in the Corps of Royal Engineers, so I've always liked the kind of engineering building type stuff anyway. So it kind of felt okay, but construction's a tough, tough industry. And um, I had a coach who was I was working with at the time who, who posed a really interesting question. He said, if money was no object, what would you do? And we all get caught up, I think, sometimes in business of, well, I'm doing what I do, I've just got to keep doing it without stepping back sometimes and asking a question of, of ourselves. And I, I couldn't get away from the fact that I like training, I like coaching. Um, I've always been involved in sports coaching. Um, I used to teach at Manchester Met University as a part-time lecturer. 
and they paid me, but I would have done it for free. You know, it was, I've always enjoyed that kind of give back piece really. Um, and so I thought, okay, I knew some friends of mine have been successful in property education. Um, and we talked about Simon Property Investors Network, for example. And I thought, okay, well, maybe there is a business here. And I looked at one other guy who was talking about how you, you know, buy and sell companies and thought there's a space and a need. So I founded um, the Business Buyers Club and I, I deliberately chose the name because I, I, if I was going to do it, I wanted to create a community. I wanted to have that sort of sense of a community of people like you and I who are interested in you know, SMEs and growing companies and making the, the world a better place as well as a result. Um, and and the, in 10 years, we've now coached well over 250 entrepreneurs and our clients have acquired something in the region of 145 million in revenue um, using the processes that I have developed over those 20 years really of, of being in the game for myself. I still actively acquire businesses. So that's kind of the story of the evolution, but none of it was planned, Kerry. It just kind of evolved as, uh, as we've gone along. Okay, so just a bit more detail then, Guy. What what might be the typical time span for purchasing a business? And and your, if I understand rightly, then your business model is to hold a business buyer's hand and and take them through that process, due diligence, head of terms, etc., yeah. etc., et and and presumably take a a cut of the of the of the deal. Is that right? Um, not quite. So we, my passion is is to help people on what I see as both sides of the fence, really. So I'm passionate about helping business owners who were like me, who maybe have reached a, a, a point in their business growth where they you know, they might have a six, seven figure business, but really want to push on, but it gets hard. And acquisitions is bar none, the fastest way to grow. But there are lots of bear traps on the other side of that. People get somewhat caught up in the whole notion of it's the deal, it's the deal, but it's not. It's about what comes afterwards, really. And I speak from the heart. I speak from personal painful experience of getting it wrong. Um, I once bought a, a company in Blackpool because I could, um, and it was horrific. <laughs> it was completely the wrong thing to have done. Um, and it's not like property where you, know, you buy a property, it turns out to be a bit of a dud. You can just put it back in the auction and get rid. You can't do that with a business. So I'm quite passionate about trying to help people to understand why they want to do it what they want to achieve from it and, and whether whether even doing acquisitions is the right thing for them in that context, really. So at its heart, it's education. It's for buyers and sellers. We're, we're trying to educate as many people as possible as, as to what is the, the right way to do things, where the bear traps are, but also obviously where the upsides are. When, when you do get it right, it's great. You know, it's, it's, it's good for all parties. So at its core, it's education. So we we provide very cost-effective training programs um, and, and products to help people, coaching support where they need it. And we just recently launched the UK's first network of M&A networking events to help people get together, get together, get to know each other, you know, and, and, and just constantly learning. That's really the goal. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's uh, let's look back a little bit. Clearly, it's been an interesting, interesting few a few years since COVID, yeah. but there's been lots of other environmental shifts with interest rates and um, Brexit and um, hybrid yeah. working and and all the rest of it, and and you know, lots of news headlines about more businesses going to the wall than there ever have been type of thing. How have all those dynamics affected your industry and your business? Would you say, Guy? Um, quite a bit to unpack there. So I would say there's a, there's a few things really. Um, when I started, the, 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 the there was there was one other guy who was talking about this, and he was very much an advocate of buy a business in distress for a pound, de-risk it, turn it around, etc., and use insolvency procedures to do so. I, I personally have been experienced in that, both from getting it wrong, but also advising clients, and it's very hard to take a distressed business and make a success of it. There's, a, there's layers of reasons why companies are in difficulty, really. So I'm not personally an advocate of that approach. Um, secondly, so much the same as you as you would buy a commercial property um, or, or a buy-to-let, really. So that felt, for me, the logical way of doing it. And the main uh, finance tool that I used was invoice finance and asset finance because, again, 
there are all kinds of technical reasons why those um, products are, for me anyway, a good start point for the for the start, size of business that most people probably should aspire to acquire. Um, but also, as I say, for technical reasons as to way the way those finance products are, are available to to business operators. Um, so that market is fairly widespread. It's fairly competitive. Prices have been fairly consistent, um, and even with interest rates rising significantly in the last few years, it hasn't massively impacted on the cost of that form of debt. Whereas if you look at the, the market that I first used in 2017 when I bought a business using what's called a cash flow loan, um, you know, the, the percentage has gone from 9 to 15%, and that's a big delta. So the cost of debt in uh, in larger transactions is a significant factor um you know in, in in our opportunities and one of the things we we touched on we were chatting before Kerry about SAS pensions uniquely uh, in 2023 I pioneered two SAS funded um share acquisitions which as far as I'm aware is the first time that's been done um and there's still some work to do to to, to develop that opportunity but I think with the change in interest rates, the challenges in, in the in the economy as a whole, um, the state of the economy in the UK, Western world, you know, there's a lot of challenges, headwinds against us as business owners. So we have to find innovative ways, I think, to you know to keep doing what we do and and to grow our businesses. And for me, untapped market is the SaaS pension market. There's a considerable amount of cash sat in a lot of SaaS pensions. So we're working hard on processes that we can bring to bear to help those SAS pension investors tap into, for me, a, a, an overlooked, unloved um, you know, asset class, which is the shares in, in, in smaller companies, really. And mm -hmm. when you couple with that with, with the demographic shift that we're experiencing, you know, we've got 10 years now of a seismic change in the, the wealth profile in the UK. Um, just to get into the stats, if I may, you've got, we think there's about 36,000 companies in the UK owned by people in their late 50s and, and above um, that are SMEs, so they are small and medium-sized enterprises, not micro, um, that have some form of management team. And when you then compare that with the statistics currently of something between 32 to 40 percent of good profitable companies simply close you know that's a massive loss to the uk economy um that's the reason the backbone of the uk economy the wealth of the nation so i'm very interested in the preservation of, of value um, and the shift um, in ownership from you know the founder owner to the next good owner as we call it so teaching and educating people to be good buyers of companies and to look after them you know you, you're a coach action coach is all about embedding great skills and techniques to to successfully manage and grow businesses so there's a perfect synergy between the transition from a, you know, a, a an existing owner to the next owner to be successful in that transition that's that's really the overarching mission of what we're about really i think there's a huge opportunity for for business owners who want to expand and want to grow to look at this as a, as a really viable way to expand what they do. Okay, so in terms of the the challenges then, Guy, you mentioned uh, you know, accessing that SaaS market as one of your challenges. What else might be kind of top of your list in terms of the challenges of the business, considering where you are today and where you're trying to get to? Um, scale. I think we, we've always been a small operation. Um, there are, are you know other operators out there that that, that sell courses and sell the dream and the gold and ignore the realities of how challenging it can be if you get it wrong. Um, they don't really properly help people with you know, what I would call detail, um, you know, properly structured deal structures, funding, management, and especially post-acquisition post transition. There's far too many acquisitions that go wrong afterwards, and that damages everyone involved. So I'm really passionate about trying to help people to do it right from the buy side, from the sell side, from the advisor network as well. And a lot of advisors are very combative. 
Um, I believe that the best deals are collaborative. Um, and you get this all the time. You get you know brokers and advisors, make the offer, make the offer. Well, an offer invites a counter offer and a haggle and a, and a horse trade. And um, a lot of the time we say to sellers, what are you going to do with the money? You know, when, when that money lands in your bank account, you get a seven figure payout. What's your plan? What are you going to do? And all too often, They've, they've just focused in their mind on on the perception of a deal or something that a broker's told them that they're going to get and not actually thought about how it's going to change their life. So for an, an example of that, a guy that we were talking to, I, I was quite keen to buy his company, but I was just as interested in him getting a good outcome. And, he, you know, in common with many business owners, he, you know, he's like 60 hours a week in his business. And to turn that tap off, what are you going to do? You know, and, and it got to the point where his wife said, well, I don't want you ha hanging around at home. So, you know, you can't just get a hobby. So then the conversation was, well, how about you stick around in the business, be the chairman, leverage the experience and the contacts you've got, step back so you're not, you know, in it all the time, but you're not switching that tap off overnight, for example. So there's so many of those sort of layers, if you like, that I think get overlooked. Um, and that's also part of, of what we're quite passionate about. So when you say scaling up is part of your key challenge, what sort of size and shape are you now then, Guy, as a team, as a business, and, and what sort of size we, are you hoping to move to? Yeah, so we've, like I said, in 10 years, we, we've, we've coached around about 250 people, which is a drop in the ocean, really. So I really want to expand the volume of people who we help. And we have a, a world-class toolkit that we call the Business Buying Blueprint which is an online product, but it gives you everything you could possibly need as a toolkit to go and buy company. So if you apply it yourself, you, you don't need anything else. Everything is in there. It's full of videos, full of content, full of the tools that I use personally when I'm buying companies, everything from planning tools to modeling to, um, to te legal templates, everything. But we recognize that there's usually a level where people buy that and then go, well, I'm struggling with this bit. And, and then we, we've created a coaching support tool, which is scalable to help people to you know, get past the blocker, if you like, in, in, the, in that process. There's only five steps. In every transaction, there's five steps. So positioning who you are, understanding why you want to do it, what your goals are, obviously deal flow, um, negotiation, deal structuring, finance, negotiation through to heads of terms, and then the, then the what I call the project management piece of completing a deal. And then lastly, that transition phase. So those are the sort of five key steps, really, that that we that is in the toolkit, and and we've made that as as cheap as possible. Not so it's a cheap product, but to make it accessible. So three thousand plus VAT. So that's that's the simple but comprehensive route in. And what we do is encourage people now to sort of get involved in that if they're serious about it, and then we can identify where they're challenges might be so some people take for example one of my clients who is fantastic at building rapport with sellers he's a brilliant marketeer and you know sales guy but hates spreadsheets like with a passion but you can't do this without mastering your numbers you've got to know your numbers in in the deal so that's an example of where we can help someone to get past that particular blocker and then other people are brilliant at the numbers but crap at building rapport so we'll help them with that and so on so so, it's so how many five things that that people need to work on? So, you sounds like you've got some um, people coaching uh, coaching business owners and buyers and sellers through that process. What sort of size and shape is the team now, then, guy? Well, we're still at the moment a very small team. There's only four of us um, covering all the different things that we do. But that's why I said my ambition is to is to look at ways that we can scale this now, reach more people, help more people, both on the buyer side on the sell side. Um, we launched the Dallas Advisory last year, which is a, a unique sort of corporate finance team where we help people to buy companies that already have a seven-figure company, but you know don't have the time to get involved in the process. But they might know a competitor or someone in their industry that wants to exit. So we help them to to basically project manage that whole deal process, and we helped a few clients last year to do that, which is great fun. Um, uh, and then we also help people with the sell side. So because we've been buyers and sellers, we get it. 
So we're passionate about helping people who might be thinking, how do I get out of my business? Mm. And there are so many bear traps in that bit of the process. I mean, I don't know if you know, the stats are horrific. Less than 20% of companies that come to market sell. And that's really bad. So we help people to understand where they might have a problem, where their challenges are, and circle back to that whole thing of, well, how much is enough? If you know that a million pounds is all you need to have an amazing retirement, you don't need to hold out for two million quid because a million does it. And you might find it much easier transaction at a million than, say, trying to hold out for one and a half just because some broker somewhere told you it's worth two million quid. It's that sort of psychology that, that also, you know, for me, plays here as well. Very good. So what about aspirations for the business then? Where do you see the Business Buyers Club in, say, five years' time, Guy? For me, I want it at the <clears throat> excuse me at the heart of a community um, of well trained, knowledgeable, passionate people who get the same thing that I see, which is this need for a transition to help these business owners. You know, a lot of business owners have their companies for twenty, thirty years or longer, and a proportion of their wealth is tied up in their company, and we really want to see them transition. You know, to 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 retrieve the, the wealth tied up in their balance sheet to be able to retire and, and to do the next thing in their life, but successfully transition that business to the next good owner so that the preservation of value continues and that helps everybody, you know, in the economy from, from the top down really. So, you know, if the company closes, a customer loses a supplier, supplier loses a customer and people are put out of work, that's not a good thing. So, in, in the next five years, I'd like to think that we become the preeminent organization to help both sides of, of that coin, really, to transition successfully. Okay. Got you. So now on to arguably my most important question, Guy, and that's about lessons you've learned as a business owner and as a business leader. Um, you know, you talked about a lot of mistakes you've made. You know, if you were uh, starting or buying a new business now, what, what might be the... the top piece of advice you might give yourself um there's probably three things um first of all people don't spend enough time understanding value in a business and particularly a balance sheet um you know i i was that business owner i had an annual conversation with my accountant how much money have we made and how much ta how much is the tax bill um and it's kind of the wrong lens really so try and encourage people to start to fall in love with the balance sheet and see where the real value in a company sits. Um, I think secondly, understand your own motivation, have patience um, and take a slightly longer term view. When I was first buying companies, it, as I say, same thing really, it was all about cash flow and putting money in the bank. And I think long-term wealth comes from laying better foundations rather than short-termism. And so I look at transactions both for myself and for my clients now from a, a longer term perspective, take less money out of the deal, reinvest that into the growth of the business. You know, and you're a good example of that. You know, get a get a good coach. I think that's the third bit that morphs into that. So have someone to help you. Your team is really important. You can't do this by yourself. Um, so a good coach, a good CFO. And, you know, getting the right management team to support whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether you want to expand by acquisition, expand organically, management is everything. And money follows management. So build an amazing team around you and you'll achieve your goals more quickly and more enjoyably. Those mm -hmm. are probably the, the key three things. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's, that's great advice. I'm, I never fail to be uh, kind of surprised about how many business owners are frankly, bamboozled by balance sheets. They just, you know, don't really understand the terminology yeah. or what they're about or why why they yeah. exist. So, um, yeah, some great some great lessons there. Well, yeah. uh, Guy, thanks ever so much for sharing, you know, where you are and your journey and some of your lessons. Just one more question, if I may, be before we close. Yeah. If anybody is interested in a follow-up conversation with you or getting involved with your network, for example, what might be a sensible next step? If, if people are interested in education, um, I love to communicate directly. Um, email me, guy at thebusinessbuyersclub.co.uk, and I'll answer the email personally. Um, 
have a look at my YouTube channel. I've got um, quite a lot of free videos on there, which share my philosophy, you know, tell you lots of useful things about what we do and how to do it, how to get into it, whether this is the right thing for you. Search me out on YouTube. Um, or better still, come to one of our networking meetings that I mentioned before. We've now launched networking events across the UK. So we've got London, Manchester. Um, I'm up in Darlington for the Northeast. Um, we're launching in Birmingham next month. So there'll be a city near you that you can get to, and it's a great environment. Um, it's a no, it's a it's a, a no sell, no pitch fest zone. Um, it's purely about building out this community that I'm I'm passionate about. Um, so Manchester is the uh, last Wednesday of, of every month. London is the first Wednesday of every month. Um, Darlington is the the last Tuesday, and so on. So, um, but our website for that is m and a networking dot co dot uk and so it's another great way for people to connect with us really and is that a different website to the business buyers club website right. yeah. okay well we'll put i'll, I'll dig those out and i will attach those to the videos when we post these on linkedin etc guy um, so uh, that will enable people to get access to those dates and also to the uh, uh, the central business buyers club uh, website as well so, Guy, once again, thanks ever so much for sharing uh, your thoughts, your story, and your time. And once again, all the very best with the Business Buyers Club and the MA Network. Thanks very much, Kerry. Great to spend time with you. All the best. Bye for now. Thank you.